Okay, today is exercises for spinal instability and namely lumbar spine instability. And this is because I've got a patient at the moment who's got spinal instability and it's one of those patients that many of us physios don't get to see in their life. And I'm lucky enough to see quite a few of these and last week I saw one of them and I'm gonna show you the exercises I gave him. I'm also gonna show you what's going on with his spine. I've got a video of how he moves. I'll explain that and I'll show you that video. And then we'll go through and drill down what's happening in his spine and then what exercise we're going to do to help him stabilize and neurally get his spine nice and stable and stop moving the way it does and stop hurting. Now, what's happening with him is in his spine, when he does a prone leg lift, now, let's backtrack. He's getting back pain, right? Right side of back pain. And he got it from lifting something heavy ages ago. And what's happened is, that part of his spine, the muscles on the right side of his spine here have got weak. So he's got pain here, okay? So in right side lower back, he's got pain. And that pain has switched off his muscles at a period of time and they haven't got stronger. They've just stayed weak because that part of the spine, the deep, deep muscles down there that do the stabilization work segmentally so they can switch off due to pain at one level and what happens is the big extensors sort of work over top but he's left with pain and aching when he does certain exercise so when we assess him what he what i'm assessing is a prone leg lift which is this position here so he's in this position and he's going to lift one leg and then lift the other leg now i'll show you on the video of what happens but essentially when he raises his, he's got pain on his right side, when he raises his left leg, okay, what tends to happen is his spine shifts, okay, and you'll see this. What's supposed to happen is when you raise that leg, the spine's supposed to be stable, okay, but when you notice when he raises this leg, he shifts away like that, okay, so he's not being stable on this side, he's, the strength is gone. When he raises his right leg, his, his opposite side is left, stays relatively stable okay but when he raises left it shifts and moves okay now that's a really classic scenario and a really good assessment tool to do a prone leg lift to see can you keep the pelvis stable does the spine rotate does this sort of separate and rotate here instead of be, be, being stable with those muscles here when he raises his leg so as he raises his right leg he hardly moves with the spine but when he raises his left leg his whole spine shifts and rotates to the left. You can see that there. So let's repeat that. So when he raises his right leg, he stabilizes the left side of his spine, stabilizes his spine. And then when he raises his left leg, he shifts and lets go on the right hand side. Now, the exercise that we're gonna to do to help him stabilize, because some of this is pretty hard. It's a lot of brain to muscle stuff. It's hard to, you can't see it, You've got to sort of feel it a little bit, but the exercise we do stimulate that strengthening, okay? And we need to get that deep, low level strengthening. We don't want to do heavy lifting like Romanian deadlifts and squats and those sort of things. We don't want to do big extensor work. We want to do low level stabilization work. Problem with that, it's pretty boring, takes a long time, but it's effective and you've got to stick at it and do it week and week out to try and get that effect of that repetition of strengthening and neurological sort of input, like practicing a tennis shot or practicing golf shot, it takes a lot of time. Once you get that, then you'll probably see the results. So first one is with this one here. Now this exercise looks a bit crude, but it is so effective for trying to teach your brain to load because we don't want to do a big squat yet. We don't want to do vertical squat load because what will tend to happen is he'll jack into extension, he'll use extensors, and we don't want that. We want a low level load that he can control that he switches on the deep little spinal muscles, not as big extensors. Now the way you do that is you back up onto the ball like this, which seems a bit weird, but what you're trying to do, instead of a vertical compression coming down, we've got the compression coming from the bottom, okay? So as I go into a four point position here, what I'm trying to do with this part of my back is keep it neutral. I don't want it going into extension, and I certainly don't want it going into flexion like that. I've got to try and get into a neutral position so it's sort of flat and then from that point I'm just going to push back into the ball. Now the harder I push back the more I've got to turn on my core here 
and especially want to turn on my deep pelvic floor and which is my transverse which will get my multivitus so if I bring on my pelvic floor and then push that back until I start shaking and then let it go so I'm trying not to pull and I push back I don't want to push back and start using my extensors to do the job and I certainly don't want to push back so hard that I buckle because of lack of strength so I've got to try and keep neutral. Sometimes it's quite handy if I can see a mirror that way, I can actually look at it, okay? So you can see what's happening to your back. And when you push back, try and maintain that neutral spine and then come away. And that's almost like your sort of isometric warm-up stuff. We're doing isometric work. And that's the big take-home thing with this, is this part of the spine, we're trying to train isometrically. We don't want to train it into extension, right? We want to train these muscles to switch on hold those vertebrae together, do their job, while other muscles around it are doing the movement, okay? So that's a really nice warm-up drill. The second thing I'd go straight into is a bird dog. Now, we've done bird dogs before. Um, the reason we're doing a bird dog, again, it's static, okay? So we're now trying to add a bit of load on the leg, but we're trying to do it in a four-point position, which is easier than doing it in a prone leg position. You saw in the video, he's on prone lifting his leg, that's hard to maintain a stable spine. It always wants to go into extension. The extensions want to help out because of the leg. But when you're in four points, it's a lot easier. So again, you find your neutral here and then bring on that pelvic floor, raise one arm. Now, what I'm going to do at this point here is, if it's my right side, this right arm. So if I'm training my right side, I want my right arm forward because I'm then going to bring on a bit of lat because the left leg is the load okay so you've got to think this left leg i'm going to counter the load with my right side all right so i don't shift and move in here and you'll see people who are really weak on a bird dog is their spinal shift so if i'm on, i'm in that position this when they raise their leg the spinal shift and move okay and that's what we don't want so if you're one of those people who if you raise your arm and then you shift your spine it twists away then your best bet is to downgrade that bird dog and keep your leg or your foot in contact with the ground. So from here, raise your arm and then just slide your foot back to try and maintain and teach your body, I've got a little bit of load. And you can feel here, things are working. Okay, so even just moving your leg out and sort of nearly going to one arm, one leg, you've got one arm forward and then you're nearly raising this one, it'll still engage and switch on. And maybe that's enough to bring on that activation and stabilization and give you that isometric loading through that right side of the spine. So of course you do it both sides because the one side will teach the other side, but that is what I progress through from the ball. Okay, now, once you've got those two working well, the second thing is trying to advance the leg part and that's where you go to sort of almost like a reverse hip extension. Now, some people got a reverse lumbar extension, but we don't want lumbar extension, right? We're trying to do this as a stability exercise for the lumbar spine, we want hip extension. We're going to teach the brain, when I extend my hip, don't extend the lumbar spine. I want to work as a stabilization. There are some sports where you extend your lumbar spine, but for this purpose, we're trying to train the muscles underneath. They don't do extension, they do stabilization. So, bench like this, and you want to be um, on the edge of it. Now, in the gym, sometimes they have a sort of a rounded, sort of tiny, small piece of equipment with a bit of leather on it. You can grab two handles. You've probably seen those before people doing leg extensions off that. I want to do doing one leg extension. So you're not doing double like this, because you're just going to do lumbar extension. You want to be doing one. Now, the trick is, get your pelvis sits off the edge there so you can move that pelvis into position. Because what you don't want to do is when you raise your leg, is you don't want to go in, into an anterior tilt and extend your back. We don't want to teach your brain, whenever I use my leg, I want to extend my back because that's what he's doing at the moment. It's not working for him. So we've got to go, not flexion, we just got to make sure it's neutral. So he's got to find the neutral spine and then turn on his pelvic floor and his transversus and maybe a bit of obliques to hold it on so it stops him going to extension. So he's staying in neutral. Plant one foot and then he's going to, you can grab on here if you want to, pull your lats on, which may help with a little bit of thoracolumbar stability here. And then you're going to slowly raise that leg. And you can only raise the leg as much as you can control neutral. Okay, so 
if you get to the point where you get up and it starts extending, that's too far. So from here, find a neutral, core on, lats on, and if you want to be really pedantic, right side with left leg, like the bird dog, and you've got to think, you can almost put this hand here and feel if you're extending or not, and try and use, think, I've got to use my glute to extend, and my hammy to extend my hip, and my lumbar spine is engaged, I can feel it's turned on, but it's not going into extension. It's, I'm trying to keep it in neutral while I do hip extension. All right. Now when you start off, there's going to be a little bit of give, a little bit of movement. Okay, but You're trying to minimize the heck out of that movement of lumbar spine to say, when I do this, I'm going to not extend the lumbar spine, I'm going to extend the hip. Now if you do that enough times, you get enough engagement of those deep little low, low level muscles. That's the strength thing we need to help him stabilize, to get rid of his pain. Okay, so some part of this is pain relief, some part is also stabilization, so he gets a nice stable spine and he can get strong with that. Now, that's all well and good. We've got, you know, activation, trying to get some coordination, get those muscles firing with our slings, and then eventually doing that. But I also want some rotary stability, because you see in the video how he rotates away. So what I want to teach him is making sure when he spins and rotates, he doesn't disconnect because that's what he's doing on the floor. So we're going to give him an exercise to try and stabilize the ribs to the pelvis. And so when he rotates, there's no movement of you know, ribs and pelvis separating. So we do a plank to side plank. Now this is a McGill classic. So what I will get him doing is going up to a wall. Okay. And you're going to start off with a plank on a wall. So if you imagine I'm on the floor. This is a plank on a wall. We're going to shift to a side plank on a wall. Now you're best doing this in standing so you can get the idea of how to stabilize and stop twisting, not on the floor. The floor's too hard, okay? You'll progress to that, but the best thing is doing the standing. Now what I want to see is when he moves, he doesn't shift his bum first, okay? So you can't, the whole idea is to not twist your pelvis, not twist the spine before the ribs go. So if anything, from here, you've got to tighten your core and lift this left arm off. So I'm now three point instead of four. So I've got that left arm off. And then I want to spin through my toes and my right shoulder at the same time. So feeling like, if you imagine my ribs and my pelvis is connected here. There's no disconnect here. They're connected. One block here. And then when I come around, I spin on my toes, spin on my right shoulder coming round and then stopping at that point there, okay? And then the same thing, you're gonna to go to the other side. So you lift the right, spin through your toes, pelvis and ribs together. It takes quite a lot of concentration here. The whole time you have to have this core because remember, pelvic floor TA is gonna fire your multivitus. And then you rotate, making sure you don't rotate the hips first or last. Spin through your toes, hold it, hover above that wall and then land there, okay? And you're just gonna rotate left, right, left, right, left, right, to get that whole idea of trying to connect through here. Because you know if you do that, you're definitely gonna be connecting through the back and stabilizing and stopping it, disconnecting and rotating. So those are sort of my four little entry level exercises. They may seem hard, they are sort of hard neurally, but they're not so hard for the lower back. Remember, we're dealing with a weak lower back. If you make those exercises too hard, it's not going to work, you're going to compensate. You start off with low level stuff, then he'll progress through some harder stuff, which I'll show you once he's better. See you next time.